holler when I follow. We're back with another follower of a video. Don't, don't, don't subscribe, please. Okay, okay, enough with the filler. Let's just go over May 6th edition of Monday Night Raw. I think we I think on Tuesday we were going to be in Kentucky. So what happened on Raw? Vince McMahon issued a bit of a wild card where four recipients of Raw superstars are allowed to go to SmackDown and only four recipients of SmackDown is allowed to go to Raw weekly. And what that means is strictly they are too lazy to actually think of unique other storylines to deal with when they have over 100 guys in the fucking roster. So they're just... Trying to keep the storylines as cohesive as McIntyre with Roman Reigns, Shane McMahon with uh, Miz as consistent as possible, because obviously the Miz can't just fight for the U.S. title. Rey Mysterio is just gifted another opportunity, and the Cruiserweights are stuck with their own show, and developmental ain't shit, so let's just do wild card. Or, if you remember, the Monday Night Raw Super Show that we just had, like, fucking, I think, Five years prior? I, I think it was, it's like, no, not five years. Si like, maybe six years prior. And ragged that off is just SmackDown and Raw Superstars can now fight together. Or against each other. Because we are too lazy to make storylines. Involving the brand. With wasting most of our talent like EC3. And Cross. Sam. Neville, Austin Aries. Now it's going to be Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. You know, it's not a happy time to be a wrestling fan. That's why I, I, I'm going to upload this video really later than I usually do on Wednesdays to Thursday. So what, ha so what happened with a bunch of altercations involving storylines that already happened, like Shane McMahon coming into the ring, Kofi Kingston, Daniel Bryan coming into the ring, Roman Reigns coming into the ring, all, Smackdown, all three SmackDown superstars coming into the ring, then Lars Sullivan later on. Just to beat up jobbers. We're trying to make him our Braun Strowman on SmackDown, but thanks Braun Strowman can come to SmackDown whenever he can. Does it really matter to build this guy up as individually a threat? There were two good matches in the show. One was clean, though. But let's just go over the rest of it. And Vince McMahon just kept calling himself a genius like it really didn't matter. It really didn't matter. What, what kind of genius move is, hey, instead of making dream matches involving interbrand top stars, I should just let all of them just consistently show up whenever they want every week. I'm a genius. People are obviously going to come to SmackDown and Raw. Three hours of fake fighting. Everybody wants to see that. Then we had a bit of an altercation with Rollins and... AJ Styles with Rollins acute, uh, uh, trying to argue with AJ Styles, even though Rollins should be aware of this. He's been Intercontinental Champion before. He's been WWE Champion before. He's obviously known guys that... I, I, I know this is a cliche, and this is commonly to just show that these guys never been in the ring before. What would AJ Styles do to Seth Rollins? But w near twenty plus career, twenty plus year career for AJ Styles, and uh, I think Rollins been in there for a lot of years. If you watch Ring of Honor and shit like that, I think there's a lot of stuff he did. But I think it's nearly ten years already. Rollins been in the company. I mean, in the business, shouldn't they at least make him feel more aware that there's a target around his target on his back and? More superstars would do the same thing, even Dean Ambrose suggested. So having this little altercation like Styles and and Rollins were tight, really doesn't matter. I found it just to be an awkward segment to just have Rollins and Rollins as big as a tag team match involving Vince uh forcing Styles and Rollins to tag with each other for this night of Raw. And the match opener. 
If something as big as the contender and you're the champion fighting together, because of course they won't coexist, it just ended up with Rollins getting left behind and then just gotten beaten up by Lashley eating a spear and then getting pinned. Yes, it was Corbin and Lashley against Styles and Rollins for the match opener. It was a pretty decent match. I thought there was a, a few botches. The Styles, Styles usually isn't lazy. And he obviously isn't that sloppy if you see him in the match. But I think he did a lackluster and a drop kick. I think there was a few moves where I thought it could have been better. But goodness. Uh, this was a weak match to start off the opening show. And I already heard that this is already a bad Raw. So... I'm already up to par with what the fuck was happening. Obviously, showing another uh, Sami Zayn segment, just showing the fans being they ain't shit. They'll change their head on their dime. They're hypocrites, just like another human being. Then Braun Strowman came. He didn't say anything. He just wanted to beat the shit out of Sami Zayn instead of just saying, You're talking shit to these people. I thought he was healed. I thought he was healed. And he just came beating shit out of Sami Zayn. So, it ended up in a pretty decent scuffle backstage with Sami Zayn just using anything to get away from him. And, and then Braun Strowman just somehow his best friend is a garbage, uh, a, a dumpster, and just tossed Sami Zayn there. And then he got chucked down by the garbage truck that somehow was there. And, poof, gone. Pretty funny segment. Even dragging him down from the thing was pretty funny. So, you keep... Strowman doing stuff like this, they might build back up his popularity he had like two years ago. Next up was involving the Lucha House Party in a squash match? These are three cruiserweights. Why the fuck did they get a squash match? The fuck? Cedric Alexander didn't even show up the last week. And he's supposed to be on Raw. He's supposed to be a hot commodity. But the fucking Lucha Dragon... Uh, pff, this fucking Lucha House Party gets a squash match? Not Cedric Alexander? I want to skip this match. I'm going to skip it. Because obviously, this is why it's a trash Raw. And then you have Robert Roode. Let's get a bad taste in my mouth. Face off against Ricochet in the trade wins. Ricochet lost to Robert Roode in pretty decent fact in a pretty decent action without cheating, and then Ricochet just trades wins with him. I, and I think this is supposed to if Robert Roode wins, he takes up Ricochet's spot in the fucking Money in the Bank ladder match that's involving two brands. Even though SmackDown already have three midgets, what the fuck is Ricochet gonna do? Just more spot fest to make Money in the Bank watchable. That's why they're doing this, because, of course, WrestleMania was such a fucking waste of time. It was already five hours of nothing going on and no big memorable moments. So, fuck it. I don't care. Ricochet had to win, because, actually, something was on the line. I guess that's why they had to wrestle. So, yeah. Pretty... Shitty sec... Pretty decent match. Involving Ricochet, uh, pretty big strikes going on. Uh, it's the same thing as they had on last week, but Ricochet just used the 630 and won the match. So, not much to complain here. It was a pretty decent match. Next up was a squash match involving Lacey Evans. And to show off her destructive force, she doesn't defeat one of the Money in the Bank participants. No, she literally invited them back in a backstage segment involving them to dress proper because she's a feminist. Feminist pro wrestler. Fuck. I think it can work in a main roster, but it could have worked in back in the Attitude Era. I think that's where it could have hit its strides, or at least the Ruthless Aggression Era, because they were still treating women like incredible eye con big eye candy at the time. So this in this segment was just wow. No one cared. And it was just an excuse to just to have Becky Lynch and Lacey Evans just fight again. And Corey Graves was so ecstatic, calling, it was the women's right. Yeah, you're so respectable about women, aren't you, Corey? Uh-huh. You're so 
You're so respectable, women. Yeah, we would defend them. Call their matches. Handshake them in the locker room. Cheat on your wife. You know, all the respectable things a man could do to your spouse is cheat on them with your own co-worker. You know, there's a lot of bullshit we can do in this wrestling business, even involving the hypocritical sentence of a shoot going on backstage. You just cheat on them, Corey. And you're already getting so irritating calling matches. Literally, your best calls were in the Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre match. So this was a pretty shitty segment. I understand it's supposed to prove a point. But why didn't you just have her beat some of the Money in the Bank brief uh, participants? And then you had the Viking Experience, their finisher. It's literally the name of their last. I mean, the Viking Raiders against the Zach. Can I call them the Edgeheads? I know, it's, I know it's been 10 years, but can I still call them the Edgeheads? I don't think I can call them the Edgeheads. Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, the tag team champions, were matching up against the Viking Raiders, and they beat them with the Viking Experience. That's their previous tag name just several weeks ago. It was a decent match. Zack Ryder is the hot tag specialist now. He's He had an apron clothesline. They were pretty, fin uh, pretty all right. And the uh, War Raiders, because they had a cooler name, actually had a good match with Riders and Hawkins. It was a really entertaining match. So whatever they can do, maybe they can get a tag match and a kickoff or something. This might be pretty watchable if Hawkins and Riders actually displayed their YouTube persona in their gimmick. Other, not a fucking gimmick. What the fuck kind of character does Ryder and Hawkins have? They used to be affiliated with Edge. That's literally the only relevance that they have as a tag team. This this show sucked. This show really fucking sucks. Next up was a pretty good match involving McIntyre and Roman. It was about to be a good match until Shane McMahon from SmackDown. Some I, I don't know if he well he's a McMahon, so they don't affiliate with commissioners and GMs anymore. How it should have been, but they affiliated with now just Shane McMahon fucking around with every wrestler. Even though Shane is feuding with Shane is feuding with Roman, but Miz still came out like Shane is now his business. Even though the fuck is Shane feuding with now? You punch your father in the face. That's a decent revenge mechanism. And then Shane come Miz comes back. For fucking what? Comes back with a steel chair and hits him in the back a few times and then leaves the limousine. Literally it. And it was a pretty good match too. It was, I think, a gut wrench. I think it was some kind of soup, some gut wrench suplex into a bridge. A good, I think a good vertical suplex off uh, goddamn McIntyre. Incredible. And yeah, he's not holding a belt. A belt. Please let that happen. Please make him hold the belt. I would forcefully create my own custom European Championship and give him that fucking shit. Because he's got it. I'm, <laughs> no, because he's because he's awesome. And the European belt is literally the best looking mid-card championship I've seen next to the oval-shaped Intercontinental title. And I have a bit of a soft spot for the uh, IWGP United States Championship. I thought that looked pretty dope. Next up was, uh, involving the U the Uzi Hot? The fuck? This segment symbolized everything wrong with this Raw. You had Gallows and Anderson supposed to face off against the Revival, and then you involve the Usos because they're fucking around with the Revival as little fucking shit kids. And they sabotage their cream that they put around their nuts and shit and ass. And stop the match because their pants, because their butts and ass were hurt. 
How so? What happened to the badass Usos I've seen for the past two years? What happened to the Usos that said, "Welcome to the Uso Penitentiary"? When their gr little aggressive gang rap battle persona shit that you know actually got the fans over. What happened to when they literally destroyed the New Day in a battle rap? Sure, some of it was stupid, but it was cool, it looked aggressive, it gave us a reason to watch the Usos again. Other than that face paint shit. And now they say God name in pranking wrestlers. The fuck kind of shit is that? That was like my only reason watching the Usos on SmackDown. Because they actually were aggressive, entertaining and could actually carry tag team opponents to a match. They were literally Poly Polynesian fucking Young Bucks, but cooler. Young Bucks kiss Adam Cole in the cheeks. You suspect me to watch a Young Bucks match? This was a fucking terrible segment. Then we had the semi-main event. That somehow wasn't the tag team match, but this was the second to last match of the damn show. And you're telling me that No Way Jose was close to having a match with somebody, and then Lord Sullivan came beat the shit, does what he do best, not have a clean match and just beat the shit out of everybody. I was just making him a monster. He's not come. He's not causing any career damage. He's not causing any emotional damage. He's not carrying that much heat because not against guys that are actually fan favorites. No way Jose hasn't been a fan favorite since he's been on NXT. Our troop is only fan favorite, and yet he injures our Jeff Hardy kayfabe. This was a shitty segment. I did not care. Lars Sullivan also went backstage to just semi intimidate Vince McMahon to make sure there's four participants to go to SmackDown and Raw. Why would Lars care about going to Raw right now? When they have a superstar shakeup just in a, just the next year, I don't understand this. If they wanted to just change stuff up, why didn't you just schedule the WWE draft later in the year? Did it really matter to just mix shit up instead of make or at least push your young talent that you have just scuffling away, doing nothing, or are fucking injured? I don't even understand why Renee Young is still in commentary. Next up was the main event. Daniel Bryan loses clean. Again, on Raw. Two SmackDown wrestlers main event on Monday Night Raw. The fuck is going on here? What's going on, man? Am I supposed to be irritated or something, bro? Listen, I fuck with Kobe Kingston. I don't mind Daniel Bryan because he's a great wrestler and adds nothing else to his character except trying to make sure old ones work. And plus, he's a vegan. But where the hell was Harp? Uh, where the hell was Rowan? None of the Rude came out because it's only Xavier Woods. They just had a clean wrestling match. They still call him the new Daniel Bryan, yet he's had this heel persona since no last November. Literally, all this crap made me just understand these guys are going to have a decent match. There was a move that involved him getting tossed out the ring, off a reversal or something, and then knocked out, nearly knocked out cold. The same thing happened. When he tried to hit the barricade, then he start doing, I thought they were plunges, or he's just piling his body around, because Kofi can't do it anymore. Kofi's an incredible wrestler, but by God, can't he not sh tell a story, except, I'm gonna come back from this. Because he just doesn't have that kind of ability, like Kevin Owens or Daniel Bryan does. Kofi Kingston is literally one of the worst champions I've ever seen. Not only does he ha don't have much of an ambition, he wins a mark on the championship. He's just doing this so he can just prove that he can do it. Nothing else to prove. He can literally just lose the WWE title on Money in the Bank and not look back for a rematch. That's how I feel.
Not because, of, oh, he's a nigga winning the world title. It isn't going to work. No! I would love in 2003, Booker T was at least over. The only thing representing Booker T is the new, um, Kofi, Kofi Kingston is the New Day. And that's my issue why it doesn't work. Back when Hulk Hogan won the WCW world title a couple times, he's been represented as Hulk Hogan, including the New World Order. He is the leader of the New World Order, holding the biggest championship in the fucking business. That's what it takes. Thanks to New Day isn't with a leader. The fuck am I supposed to get off Kofi Kingston holding the world title? It's Especially when Biggie Links is injured and he's literally with one fucking cheerleader. He wins off the Trouble in Paradise and we had two, two midgets fighting for the fucking belt. Your main prize championship and your main prize fucking show for three fucking hours and, and Raw, that's not even their belt. Raw's Universal Champion was the fucking match opener. This gets a 3 out of 10 for pissing me off in so many weird levels that it doesn't make any logical sense why I shouldn't be angry. I'm off. Um, it's a happy day. It's late. I can relax, lay down, and watch a television show that I admired for 10 plus years. I hate bringing this up. Same thing Kofi did. That's an excuse why he's WWE champion. Somehow longevity just allows you to just get up in the business. Instead of actually performing well. It, it, it astounds me at this length of time that... The, the Raw and SmackDown are sucking. And this is why. Two midgets fighting for the belt in the main event. Of a brand they're not even represented by. And Vince thinks it's going to pull ratings up. When damn well knows he has a football league that he wants to operate. And that shit goes astray. What the fuck's going to happen to McMahon's money? Why is he playing with this Russian roulette when he know he has a big ass trigger finger? And the gun's loaded completely. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, God, this Raw sucked. Please like, subscribe, comment below if you want to get any questions. I'll be really, really welcomed in your comment, and, com and I'll comment back anytime you want. Thank you for watching. I need, I, I need tea.